Hey guys, my name is Jonah Fogel. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm committed to American University. I was born in Providence, Rhode Island, but didn't actually start playing soccer until I moved to Brooklyn, New York when I was four years old. And when I was four years old, I started playing for ASO, which is just kind of a house type league. When I was a kid, played with my sister and things like that, and a bunch of other local kids. And that was when I started to really start like, to find the love for the game. And that really drive me forward to keep playing up until this point now. And after a couple years of that, I moved on to another team called the Brooklyn Patriots when I was about six or seven. And I played for that team for a couple of years. It was a travel team with a bunch of local kids from Brooklyn. We would play tournaments in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, local teams in Brooklyn and things like that. And then following that, I moved to Buffalo, New York when I was eight years old. And that was when soccer started to become like my main passion and my main love and what I would really focus my entire like days and life around. And at first I joined a, a house league and with a bunch of, with a bunch of like kind of pretty talented kids. And then from the house league, uh, a coach that I know super well now to this day, bought a bunch, brought a bunch of kids from that team or from that league and um, created a team called uh, DSC Europa, which was like a select team and which was a travel team. We started playing through three-way league and we would play through state cup, regionals, things like that. And that was when, that, so that, yeah, that was when I found, found the love for the game. Like I, I would train every day, even we only trained three times a week, but I would find ways to play with, play by myself or with friends every day, just trying to get touches on the ball and just maintain and just trying to get better every day, honestly, because that's what I wanted to do uh, for, for a career when I'm older. And then a couple years of that, some some good runs in uh, State Cup, and then wasn't really able to win it with that team, DSC uh, Europa. And then following that, I moved to uh, Global Premier Soccer, otherwise known as GPS in Buffalo, which was also really big in Rochester, known as GPS Rochester. And um, so I started out with GPS Buffalo, and there was, and we played through a league and traveled through that. and. We, we were a pretty solid team, but nothing too crazy. And then after a year a year of that, we created a, a regional a GPS regional team with kids from Rochester, uh, Buffalo, Syracuse, kind of in the Western New York area. And with those kids, we created the best team and put that team in a league and state cup, which was our main focus. And in that year, we won state cup and then moved on to regionals, which were in Virginia, I'm pretty sure. and. Uh, we won our first game and then I think we lost our second game which I think eliminated us from contention to move on but we were that was honestly to, the, to this day one of the best teams I played on with a bunch of kids who went on to play for really good clubs around the country and that that was a super fun experience and then following that um, going into I think my it was my eighth grade year before high school I played um, I played for a GPS kind of regional team again, but it, a bunch of the kids had already left. Some had gone to MLS academies already, such as Columbus Crew or Sporting Kansas City. And so the team wasn't as strong as some kids left and things like that. So I played, I played that year with that team. It wasn't the best season, but I also was playing varsity with my high school team, which was more not the highest level, but more just more just a fun experience with a bunch of older guys and got to meet a, meet a bunch of cool people. And at the end of that season, I was kind of a little frustrated. Like I was one of the better players at the time and a lot of kids were kind of stagnant and not getting much better. And I wanted to push myself to be, to like get to the next level. So I spoke to my dad and things like that and decided I need to take a step forward and soccer in Buffalo and like the Western New York area wasn't the best. 
so I needed I needed to move on for uh, the start of my freshman year so I wasn't able to find an opportunity at the beginning of my freshman year so I started first half of my freshman year at a at a high school and played soccer there and kept playing with GPS but then halfway through the year I um I went down to Lake Placid New York and tried out and kind of just toured and also tried out and trained with uh BlackRock FC in uh for Northwood School it was the their first residential academy um up in Lake Placid and this was around December time I went up and it was a super fun experience and I played well and I talked to them the coaches after and they they said I could possibly join up in the beginning of January which was something I didn't really think of at the time but definitely something I wanted to do because I wanted to get out of Buffalo and uh, bring soccer to the next level and keep improving so they offered me a spot and I decided to go up to Lake Placid New York for the second half of my freshman year and play there and during my time there I was playing uh, I was playing two years up with the U-17s at center back uh, and we played since Lake Placid is kind of in a kind of remote area there wasn't many teams around us so we had to go to tournaments so we went to tournaments such as um, a big one in Vegas a big showcase and we also went to Dallas Cup which was a super fun experience and we won a couple games down there and we didn't qualify for the uh, elimination rounds but our U19s made it all the way to the semifinals and had a really good run which was super fun and just being with the guys out in Dallas was just an amazing experience and then following follow, that following summer I wasn't sure yet of if I wanted to go back to Lake Placid or or maybe look for a new opportunity but I was definitely really happy with the soccer side of things but the school down there was only 200 kids and it was a pretty small environment which wasn't my thing at the time so I spoke it over with my parents and didn't really know what to do but I was kind of planning on going back but I didn't make a full commitment yet and then I wasn't they invited me down to some uh, Fox Soccer Combine down in Warwick, New York, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere again, New York. And it was at a soccer complex right next to a aban uh, an abandoned jail. And it was just a weird, com it was just a weird combine with a bunch of good players, some players from DC United, uh, Bethesda, kids from Connecticut, kids from just kind of all over. It's kind of random, but some good, definitely some good players. And BlackRock had invited me down to this and um, during this event, I, I played all right. It was kind of just more for fun, and I didn't really think anything of it. And uh, funnily enough, one of my one of my teammates currently at Shattuck, Jack Ross, I played with him for a GPS national team in the past years, and we uh, in Florida. Or I mean, he's from Florida, but um, at the time playing for GPS Buffalo, they brought a bunch of the best kids from all the GPSs in the country to play in the San Diego Surf Cup, which I had won with my teammate now, Jack Ross, and. That was a super fun experience. And I knew he had just committed to go to Shattuck St. Mary's for his freshman year, as he was a, a year behind um, me. And I had saw, I had saw at the event, I saw Coach Mullen, who's a current coach and scout here at Shattuck St. Mary's. And my dad was also there and I my dad just went up and talked to him and he liked, he liked what he saw from me and decided to um, invite me down here to Shattuck for a camp a few weeks later and um, I came up to this camp and had and just enjoyed my time here and it was kind of more, a little bit of a trial but a bunch of players locally from Minnesota who came up um, to play in the camp and kind of see how it is stay in the dorms get the get the lifestyle and environment ask questions from the coaches and players who were currently at Shattuck and the team who was just number one in the country and how what their experience was with playoffs and the league and school and everything how to balance it out and from there I just they, they offered me a spot, so. So following my visit here at Shattuck in the summer, I went back to my to my house, to my parents, spoke it over with my family as I had received an offer from Shattuck due to one player um, pulling out because of financial reasons. Um, I spoke it over with my family. It was a bigger school, around 500 kids, and I knew socially and mentally it was just a better fit for me. And the soccer was also up to par with what it was back at Black Rock. And so I decided to make the move and this move was definitely something that I'm super happy that I made and probably one of the best things in my life. And it just all worked out for the better. And coming here with all school, it's all balanced and everything, training in the middle of the day, everything's around my athletics, but also study hall at night and things like that to get my work done and to just stay on task with, with everything. Um, really made sense, which is why I mainly moved, made the move to Shattuck St. Mary's. And 
Um, so throughout, so in my first year, came to Shattuck, sophomore. Um, uh, my first year, I didn't really know what to expect coming in. My roommate was originally supposed to be a hockey player, and then it turned out to be uh, a soccer player named Zeke, who was who was someone I had met up in Shattuck at the at the summer camp. So I had created a small relationship with him, and he told me all about Shattuck and what to expect, and that I should come here and things like that. So having a soccer player as a roommate really helped me, and um, helped me like make make the adjustment easier and like just help me move forward with the process and kind of feel at home already. And within a couple of weeks, I felt at home, made a bunch of friends, everything was good. So, and then throughout that year, soccer wise, it was kind of a up and down year. I was playing for the U16s, so we weren't really in the DA, but our 17s obviously were. And a bunch of, it was the o, a bunch of the 04 kids were on a U16 team that didn't necessarily have many games or a main schedule or more in a league or anything like that. So we kind of just had friendlies here and there and some trips down to places such as Chicago to play some games and things like that. So it was kind of more of a, a training year kind of, kind of to set us up for our next year, U17, to compete at the uh, now at the then DA level, which was super high and we were super excited for that. And um, so during that year, it was kind of in the fall time and then building into the winter, we didn't really have didn't really have a season, kind of just training. And I was, wasn't was fortunate enough to get um, rostered for the U17 DA team. And so I just had to focus on myself, focus on training, things like that, as we, as we didn't have any games. But then coming back up for the spring, obviously this was the COVID year. So as our main games were coming up in the spring for our U16 team, it was kind of cut short due to um, obviously COVID and we were all sent home and had to fin finish the year with online school and soccer was kind of finished there as well as academics was kind of set down a little bit and it was kind of just an off year and kind of reset and then that was obviously when um, the DA had stopped becoming a thing and MLS next came into play and things like that and then but I knew since our 04 group was super solid a bunch of kids were already playing up with the U17 DA team and kind of what we had coming in for the next year. I was super excited. I knew we could we could be super good and we could make a big run at playoffs or whatever would come in, our, whatever would we, our team would let us accomplish. And the MLS Next had become a thing and we were learning more and more about it and got more more excited about what was gonna happen for us and our team. And we came in my, for my junior year, super excited and ready to train right away. And starting off right away in the fall, we had many games. Um, even during the COVID year, it was kind of weird at school with wearing masks and we had to be in our own groups, U17 and U19. And it was kind of spread apart and it was a different experience, but it was something we had to adapt to and it just, it worked out well for us. And so during this time, we had a bunch of games in the fall and most of our games were up in Iowa, which was like a mutual location between us and uh, St. Louis FC we played, Kansas City, um, uh, sport, yeah, Sporting KC, FC United, uh, teams like that. And during the fall season, it was kind of in preparation because we knew we were going to have a 10 game season in the spring. These were just preparation games, getting everyone minutes, trying to train, see what we had, um, see what we had to work with. And during these games, we won a bunch of our games. We had a bunch of comeback wins, super fun season, a bunch of fun road trips. And it was definitely a very good experience to build us in for the spring and definitely helped us get ready uh, for the spring. So we were super excited for that and it worked out well. So following the fall season, we went into our winter break period and things like that. This is kind of more of training, positional work. And during this time, I obviously knew leading into um, our spring season and then hopefully playoffs and things like that. Um, obviously during this time there was the dead period with colleges so they weren't able to come watch us play they were only able to speak with us on the phone via email and things like that and just see our highlight tapes and clips like that but I still knew I had to be proactive with it and uh, I had to email coaches and things like that kind of just give them an overview of who I was my number um, age position I played kind of things like that and, um, and then also linked with that was a highlight video and just so I could see a little bit of me play and hopefully as the dead period was gonna to come to a close, they were gonna come out and watch me play and watch our team. But as we went into the spring season, the kind of the dead period kept getting extended and extended. And um, unfortunately at the, when we came back from break, um, I was, 
I was dealing with a little with a small little injury in my knee that I, I had just been playing through, and I didn't really think anything of it. But after a couple of days of training, it became super painful, and I could barely put any weight on it. And I had to go get an MRI uh, here, up here in Faribault, Minnesota, and it didn't come back so well. And it turned out I had um, tore my meniscus, and I wasn't gonna uh, cut it out. I was gonna get it fully repaired because that's the smart decision to make for a young athlete who's hoping to play a lot in the future. And this was a full uh, three, three or four month recovery kind of. And it was super hard for me knowing that we we're gonna we had a super successful fall leading into our spring season, and I was super excited to play and um, obviously trying to make a playoff run and win our group or and win our um, Mid America division, which obviously was like a main goal of ours. But um, leading into this season, I knew I was hurt, um, but I had to do everything I could to help support the team. And so during this time, I took a kind of a big role in coaching and helping out the team and being on the sidelines with my coaches and helping the boys in any way I could to help us win games and just keep getting better every single day. So this is exactly what I did. And I took pride in what I did and had fun with it. And coaching is definitely something I would want to do in the future. And with this related to colleges, the dead period was still kind of there for our first couple of games. And obviously I was still trying to recover and get back into it, knowing I would be able to train a little bit before playoffs had started, assuming we had made playoffs. And so as I was helping with coaching and kind of emails were kind of were a little kind of stagnant because I didn't really I didn't really want to email coaches while I was hurt, knowing that they couldn't come on to me play and I couldn't send them any fresh clips or anything like that. So I kind of just kind of stayed clear of that and then kept kept going with my recovery and kept helping the team and our season went unbelievable and it was one of the best best seasons that we've ever had and I've ever been a part of with a team, even though I didn't I only played the very last game against Columbus Crew, maybe the last 30 minutes of it. But we had won many of our games, got a lot of clean sheets, scored a lot of goals, had many fun trips, and something I look back on very fondly and it was one of the best times of my life. And then leading into playoffs, obviously I played the last 30 minutes of the Crew game, which felt really good coming off my injury, and which was such a long wait, but it was, it was well worth it and it felt great to be out there again. And then we had, I think, two or three week period. We stayed on campus for postseason, um, stayed up here to train for playoffs, but I knew it was obviously gonna be hard to get in back in the starting 11 for the first game of playoffs due to the amount of time I was out and fitness and things like that. So I just kept training, put my head down, kept trying to get better every single day and made sure I would give my best for the team. And if my name was called, I would be ready. And if not, then I'd be there to support my team. So. We went into Texas. We went in, I think, as a 12 seed, and we played against Tampa Bay, who were a solid side, but um, we came out with a 2-0 win, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to play any minutes in that game because my fitness wasn't up to up to par, and I think there were, obviously, our whole team had played the entire season, and they were better fit for the game, but I was still there supporting the boys and super excited that we won our first playoff game, and I was really excited for the next one. And so our second game, we went up, went up against uh, Orlando City, and this was a f on the featured field. And I was unfortunate enough to not start in this game again because of fit because of fitness reasons and coach's decision. And but I was still there supporting the boys, and it was a super well fought game. And um, it ended up zero zero, and went into, we ended up losing in penalties. But I was able to come in for the last five or so minutes, but wasn't really able to make much of an impact as the game was kind of just here like kind of back and forth and one of our players ended up getting a red card in the last couple of minutes and it kind of ended like that and it wasn't a, it was kind of a bitter moment but we obviously have to move on and realize that we have a next season and we're going to come back stronger and, and better and we'll be ready for the next playoffs and the next team we face and be ready for what's to come and then in our third game we played up against uh, RSL Arizona which was uh, just a consolation game. Two teams that I got eliminated from playoffs, but were two, were two really good sides. And I was able to play the full 90 minutes in that game. So it felt good. Even though the game didn't mean anything, I was felt good playing out there and being a part of the team again for the last game of the season. And yeah, and then after that, it was just move on to next season, go home, rest, and things like that. So following our run in playoffs, obviously I knew that for me, at least college was a big thing. and being in playoffs in, in Dallas, um, colleges were all over watching all of our games, things like that. And 
it was just a super big priority for me and my family to get college looks, obviously. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to get much playing time. And I was, so it was obviously hard to get college looks at that time. And leading up to then, I had emailed coaches to come see me play here, uh, in Dallas. But obviously, I wasn't able to get on the field for a lot of time. So it was hard for me at first. But um, fortunately, um, Coach Wisdo, our head college recruiter, counselor guy, <laughs> Um, he was able to help me out and he helped me with options and things like that. And at the fi- at the our final regular season game against Columbus Crew, uh, an American one of the American uh, college assistant coaches came up for the entire game, and I played the last thirty minutes of that game. And I thought I played pretty well. And he had reached out to me after that game, and I had a bunch of calls with him and the coaching staff and things like that, and see what they had to offer and what they thought about me and where I was at in the college process. And obviously during this time, I hadn't had much traction with really any schools because I had such a big injury and didn't play a majority of the season, which was obviously hard for me. And American was something that I wasn't, I didn't really know anything about American and wasn't really considering. It wasn't one of the schools I emailed it, emailed um, and went out of my way to talk to, but they had reached out to me and gave me an overview of their program and it all sounded great. So I kind of just took that and kept it in kept in the back pocket and realized what they had offered and kind of just had it for a little bit and then as I went into summer following Texas I didn't really know what to do because obviously since I didn't get much playing time there wasn't much to kind of showcase to colleges and coaches so um I don't know American was kind of still there I was thinking about it but I didn't know if I should wait or keep trying to move forward in the process with American or what really I should do so um, American had invited me up to a, a camp to kind of see me play a little bit more and also mainly for me to get a visit in and check out the school and the campus and things like that. So um, after Texas, I went up to American in Washington, D.C., stayed at my grandparents' house, which is in walking distance, luckily, and had a visit and enjoyed the campus and liked everything about it, the field, the, the academic buildings and things like that. And also was able to train uh, with some of the play, the current college players and got got a feel of how, how they are and who they are and was able to ask them any questions I need uh, any questions I um, was curious about and to help me further furthermore learn about the program and things like that and that bringing that home to uh, to uh, to my home with my family I shared their experience and kind of talked it over with them and still wasn't sure of what I wanted to do at this point but knew it was something that was definitely getting up higher and higher in my head about something that I would definitely consider um, committing to and moving forward with. So I had come down to Shattuck for my my senior year here and for preseason and didn't know what I was gonna do because the next real uh, bunch of games were in Norco, California, which was a big showcase. And I wasn't sure if I could wait that long and what spots spots were gonna be there and kind of things like that. And I, I was emailing some schools here and there, but obviously there still wasn't much traction and teams had already finished their 2022 class and things like that. And I'd kept talking with American and kept talking with my family and friends and seeing what would be the best fit for me. And as some of my friends were obviously, were already committed to um, DC, DC area schools and my grandparents had lived there forever. And I knew the DC area super well. It, it seemed like the perfect fit. And I decided to commit there uh, early September and um, got that off my chest and was super excited about it and and just I'm super glad I made that decision and it all worked out and um, I'm super excited to go there in the fall and try and fight for a starting spot. One tip to help to help any player reach the division one level is definitely to train and always try and get better whenever you can and even when your team's not training or you have an off day, still try and put in some work, whether it's stretching, ball work, kind of some small things, gym work, anything like that. Just try and work work whenever you can, when everyone else is not working and resting and just try and get that step ahead of everyone else. All right, guys, thank you for listening to my story and I hope you enjoyed and I hope it helped you. And please subscribe to my boy Fito and see you.